Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another Planet Zoo video back in Kalahari Zoo. My name is Leaf and as always, it's so awesome to have you guys here once again for another speed build. This one I just, I had a lot of fun with, alright? I'm just gonna say it right off the bat. This one was really fun to do and I hope you guys like it as well. So, it's a little bit of a more boring video. It's not really, you know, your classic Africa pack. Uh, I've been delaying like, you know, all the... You know, I've been delaying the African penguin and stuff, and I kind of opt for, you know, I kind of opt for that little Aldabra tortoise because, you know, I just want to stray from the norm, and, you know, it's just a really good addition in here. So, what I'm trying to do right now, I want to have, like, this big old minaret happening right here. I want to have, like, some big focal point for the, um, what, what's the, uh, want to have a focal point for the Fennec Fox exhibit and I think it comes out really good in the end and it actually has a little bit of a water feature that leads down into the little pond down there and yeah it's just a nice 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 little area so you can see me starting to work on it right here trying to work on like you know using those plaster pieces that we got especially those small like staircase ones I'm still trying to figure out like how to use pieces to the best of my advantage as I can because you know I'm still relatively new with like all these pieces and stuff and it's just like kind of a little bit of a struggle trying to figure out like how to make all these pieces work and stuff but eventually I do end up making it look pretty pretty swell so I do a lot of like different things in here I copy like some of those archways over just so we can get a little bit more of a uh, concise theme going on and I love this over here so I basically do a little bit of a hanging trellis a little bit you know with like some vines and ivy and I actually sink some of the flowers in there so it looks like it's in full bloom because you know when you're coming to a zoo like this you want it to be as beautiful as possible so I do a little bit of that in there here I am putting a little ivy in there and these are easily like some of my favorite more decorational pieces it's just really fun to work with and I want to do a little bit of a fountain over here just because you know we have all that water down there why not have something go into it so I do a little bit of like a little waterfall you know just have it look pretty nice in the end and I wanted to have a little bit of a food court now the food court I'll have to admit, I really didn't know what I was doing. So, in the meantime, I just kind of like just dress, dress it up with some of these tables, put some bins and stuff all around, just decorate it. I put a vending machine over there because I didn't want to clog it, like, you know, I didn't want to clog it up with two big, like, four by four buildings. I figured the vending machine would be fine enough for uh, water. I figured, you know, you could get water from the actual store itself. I don't really know why we don't have more of that, you know, just like having you know, one-stop shop for food and drink when, you know, that's supposed to happen in real life. But hey, let's just limit ourselves to the ideas of the game, I guess. Here I am doing a little bit more foliage work up there. I really want to keep it all nice and lush up there. And this is a little trick that my buddy Stoppable San taught me. You, um, you sink those big duum palms into the ground, like the small ones, like the little baby ones. And it makes it look like these, um, I guess they're like Chinese palms, I guess, the Chinese windmill palms, I'm not really sure, but, you know, in the end it looks pretty good, we can get like a nice little view up here while um, I go off and do something else, I don't really know. I do a little bit more work down there in the Fennec Fox exhibit as well throughout all of this, so do keep your eyes peeled for that, and I want to give this little minaret a little bit of a, I don't know, just a little bit of a more character, I guess. And I feel like those triangles really help to, you know, push out that character and have it look really nice. And here's something that I absolutely love. So I believe these are Drax or Mealy Storks. So they're white storks and you actually see this happen in a lot of like, you know, Moroccan and like Algeria, Tunisia and stuff like that. The storks actually make their nests in like the tall buildings, also known as like the minarets, which is like the tallest part of the mosque and they actually make their homes up there and you know they make their nests and stuff and i think it turned out really cool um it's certainly you know it's pretty cool to have and we sneak another animal in there so granted they aren't really quote unquote animals they're just you know they're props they're you know they're the gutter piece props that we're used to but you know it's it's i think it fits the bar pretty well so while we are waiting for all these mods to be updated i do want to add a few mods in here Already I've added, um, I think it's Dr. Hyena's Hyena Remake, and it looks absolutely amazing in here. He has like such a beautiful mane now. I don't know, it's just really nice to have. So here I am doing a little bit of shade structure over here. I was just going to copy the one from like down the street a little bit, but I don't know. I just really wasn't feeling it. Um, I'm not sure if, yeah, there we go. Uh, I need to stop recording there for a little bit, but I'm back, baby. 
So here I am just doing a little bit more work on the little bit of an awning. So I want to have a little bit of like, you know, I want to make use of those foxy color ropes. So I kind of have some like dangling like that. I may go back and redo some of them. Just make sure it looks nice and pretty. But yeah, right now it just seems kind of flat. I'm not really, I'm not really too sure on how to fix it up even more. But I don't know, we can figure that out soon enough. But here I am doing like a little bit more of this little fence work over here. Making sure that it looks very nice from like a perspective from where you're eating. And I actually do copy over some of those other fences I worked on in the Fennec Fox exhibit. I feel like it adds like, you know, a little bit more vibes. Just, you know, just giving a nice little perspective. I talk about that more like, I probably use the word perspective like at least a hundred times in the live portion. So do stick around for that. So you can hear me like ramble on like a big old dummy like I always do. But yeah, here I am just working on the food court sign. Um, this goes, like, I send it out to pasture. I'm not really a big fan of it. So I don't know, maybe I'll do something custom later on. But for now, I just really didn't want to mess with it too much. Here, I love the King Protera bushes. They just have like this beautiful desert vibe to them. And here I am just throwing them right in there. Uh, sorry about the noise in the background because there are some motorcycles going by. Um, not gonna stop recording for them though because they should respect me. Anyways, see, so yeah, I was thinking of like having it drape over a little bit, but it didn't really look too well. But I figure it's fine. And I wanted to put another acacia tree in there just because they're beautiful. I know a lot of people are hating on them, but they still have like the most beautiful shade patterning ever. And here I work a little bit more on the rhino enclosure. I know it's like two episodes back. Leaf, get with the program. But no, I wanted to do a little bit more work in here. Just make sure it looks nice and pretty. And so I do a little bit more like rock work. I make it look pretty nice and built up. And yeah, I think it looks a lot better from like the ground view now. It just has like, I don't know, it just has a lot more character. And I put some like flower boxes in there just so it has like, you know, just so it happens to have a little bit more green rather than like the monotone brown walls. Um, I actually do utilize like the new pieces a lot over here. I think, no, maybe I just use a plaster. Who really knows? Um, but yeah, I throw in, yeah, I use the Australia logs just because, you know, they're, they're the most natural looking logs. I really do love them. But yeah, I just basically make that all look nice and pretty. I think I put the mulch down in there too. Yeah, there we go. So it looks nice and planted and I just do a little bit like, I copy paste it a little bit. I make it look really nice and pretty. Um, just like doing small stuff like that in your zoos, hashtag leaf tricks. Um, just copy whatever you think looks good and then it'll, you can use that design throughout your entire zoo. It looks really, really swell. And it just brings like, so much more life to the area as well. I put some hydrilla grass in there too, just to make it feel a lot more natural. And here we go, doing some more work on the minaret. I wanted to use a little bit more of the tiles. I really haven't used them too much recently. Um, I just figure they're absolutely beautiful the way that they are, so I throw some of those in there. I wanted to put some of the uh, tiles right on the minaret, like on the facade of it, I guess, but it didn't really work out too well. And here I go, like redoing the entrance a little bit. I just figured, you know, it just wasn't really selling the vibe for me. It was a little bit too busy up there. So I just throw out one of the big rhino statues right there, and he looks mighty fine over there. I know we already had one, like, towards the tail end of the zoo, but hey, I want another. You know, I, Nick spent, I know that Nick has been hating on the piece quite a bit, but hey, I think it looks absolutely amazing. And that's something that you guys need to know. Whatever that I like, you probably won't like. Whatever you like, I probably won't like. Not to say that that's a bad thing, but hey, a lot of people have different tastes and objects. And you know, a lot of people don't seem to like some of these pieces, but some people know how to make those pieces work. So it's just all a learning game for all of us. And so here I am working on a little bit of the bazaar, I guess it is. Um, I guess I should probably have this section like continue on, like going forward a little bit more, just so it seems a lot more populated. And I'll do some more stuff like this. And we actually do like some really interesting stuff in here. So I wanted to put the Aldabra tortoises in here. I figured they were a small enough creature. They're a cool enough creature too. So if you guys have Planet Zoo Plus installed, they actually up the uh, they actually up the Aldabra tortoise size, and they are absolutely massive units now. So it's really good to have that installed because you actually get to you know 
acknowledge that these guys are huge in real life. And, you know, I got these guys confused with Galapagoses, so I know a lot of people are like, oh my god, the Galapagos is like one of the biggest tortoises. No, Aldabras are like huge as well. And that's like something I just noticed on my little trip to uh, Tampa Zoo. I, I know I can't stop talking about that goddamn place, but it was so cool. But yeah, I got them both confused because I was like, damn it, like I thought the Galapagos were the biggest ones. And so here I am over here. I want to do a little bit of like a workshop area for the kids. So I figured, you know, we have all this awesome tile and plaster work happening throughout this entire zoo. Where would it all come from? You know, how would the kids be able to learn about it? And so I do a little section over here where, you know, we have a guy like probably, probably like a little craftsman from the local areas doing a little bit of work for all the kids and stuff. He just shows it off like the process in it and like, you know, demonstrating how awesome it is. Like with tile work, I've experienced a lot of tile work in my day when I lived over in Morocco. Don't really know why I had a little bit of a southern accent there, but hey, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, I just worked on like a little bit of seating over here. I make it look kind of like run down and like very workshoppy. And yeah, I just really do love how this came out. It's just really, really cool to have like, you know, the options to make this. Even though, you know, it's not really usable, even though it's kind of a shame that it's not really usable. It's still really awesome to have just like in your zoos as decoration. Just it gives it a lot more a bit of a story. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people need to really try and hammer in when it comes to like, you know, all these pieces and stuff. And like, you know, decorating your zoos. I love how well the tiles stack, by the way. It looks absolutely amazing. But yeah, storytelling is like such an important part of zoo building. And I feel like a lot of people oftentimes sleep on it just because, I don't know, like it's one of like the least concerning aspects of the zoo, like, you know, you want to focus on animals, yeah, that makes complete sense, it's an animal game, you want to focus on, like, the guests, of course, but, like, you gotta focus on the stuff in between, like, here and there, and that's why I really love doing little areas like this, especially, like, amphitheaters and stuff, it's just really fun to do, and, I don't know, it's just a really fun experience, and so I tried to kind of make it by without doing much barrier work over here, I really wasn't feeling doing custom walls and stuff, so I kind of just hide it a little bit. And I also wanted to change up, like, you know, ground texture over there. So I actually instead opt to use, like, you know, I opt to use a little bit of, what is that, the mulch piece? Yes. So the guests can't even walk over there, which, you know, I don't really care about. But yeah, I'm just making it all work. So here I do a little bit of a holding area for the tortoises. Uh, granted, it's all implied just because, you know, their hitboxes aren't really the best. So I can't really make a way for them to enter the building itself. But I'm just working on like a little bit of walls over here as well. I know I just said I didn't want to do custom walls, but believe me, these, this is like the laziest I could get, <laughs> I'll admit. So I do a little bit of like, you know, the hyenas from before. Um, I do a little bit of that kind of like, you know, that spiky wall texture a little bit. I make those red as well, just because, I don't know, I like the color red. And this is actually a really cool fact, speaking of the hyenas. Hyenas and meerkats are actually, like, relatively closely related. I didn't know this. This is something Dr. Hyena told me. But, um, yeah, they're relatively closely related. And, yeah, they're just, it, it's, it actually worked out pretty well that they're actually living right next to each other in Kalahari Zoo. So, yeah, it's just really fun. Um, decorating like the poles in between with a little bit of wood logs just because, you know, I just really like the look of that and the glass beams or whatever, like the beams that come in between the glass pieces, they look kind of ugly. They look way too industrial for this. So I figured the like wooden beams in between really helped to sell it a lot more. And I do a little bit of a way for the tortoises to actually get up into their little implied quote holding area. And I do some sand work too, so I make like some dunes over there. I definitely do want to go back and, I don't know, I kind of want to bring some life to the top of that hill over there. Maybe I'll do like a little camel trek or something once uh, the dromedary gets updated, but we'll work on that when we get to it. And yeah, just doing a lot more foliage work over here. The manzanita bushes came in clutch, C-L-U-T-C-H over here. Just because, I don't know, I want to give a little bit of variety to the dunes themselves. Because when you actually go to the sand dunes and like, you know, I went to Urchebi, and which is like located near Merzuga, Morocco. It's a lot more densely foliaged than you would actually imagine it. So when you're like on the edge of it, you get like all these sand barren plants. 
and it's just really cool to see like this environment like you would often think of as like you know not really brimming with life actually have like a ton of plants in it and you know plants are usually like symbolic of life and stuff i don't know i'm kind of just rambling over here but no it's still really cool to see and i'm trying to represent that as best as i can over here because you know not everyone is lucky enough to go to areas like that not everyone is lucky enough to experience areas like that and i feel like this zoo is kind of like my i don't know it's my experiment to show you guys like the land that i kind of experienced i guess i don't know i said kind of a lot but i don't know how far in we in the speed build i see in adobe premiere that we're getting actually relatively close to the live portion so i just want to thank you guys for sticking around as always like you know i just love thanking you guys i feel like you guys like i'm really thankful that you guys actually watch these speed builds i know you like viewership has kind of plummeted recently i guess that's kind of my fault for not really hammering in too much of like you know stuff but you know i'm just really happy that you guys are loyal i'm just really happy that you guys still enjoy the stuff that i put out and it just means a lot that you guys stick around with me so i'm gonna like i'm actually gonna leave off right there enjoy the rest of the little speed build and i will actually see you guys in like i don't know probably 30 seconds when the live portion comes on so see you guys All right, guys, well, welcome back to Kalahari Zoo. So we've done a little bit of work here, as you might tell. So I apologize for like all the speed builds again. It's very, it's, it's very difficult for me to sit down and actually focus on something when I'm like this deep into a project, because you know, a lot of the times I like look back at other things and I'm like, damn it, I need to change some of that stuff up. So let's, let's actually start right at the start over here, actually. So. I put a rhino statue in here. I know we already have like the big rhino statue over here, but I felt like we could use two of them. I really do love the piece and like, you know, it's just such a beautiful, beautiful centerpiece over here. And I kind of just made it a lot more simpler. You would just see this when you're entering in. It's, it's just a lot more, uh, less overwhelming. It's less overwhelming than like the other one. I still don't know what I want to do in here. Maybe when I actually go back and do some lighting in here. I'll kind of revamp that a little bit, but for now, it's just staying the way she is. And did I do anything else around here? Not really. Um, yeah, not really. Uh, hyenas have stayed the same. I did end up reworking some of the fennec fox habitat, and we can start to see like a lot of it take shape. Uh, I'm not sure if these were in the last episode or not, but I added some more fencing in over here using like the Australia planks and the um the palettes and i mixed it up with the uh all no the african wood and forgive me for saying um a lot because i apparently don't know what i did all day so i also added some hydrilla grass right inside here just to give it a little bit more of a natural feel the rhinos do actually use the water a lot which i'm very surprised at but yeah they just seem to be vibing and i just love these big chunky boys but I feel like the thing that we most care about is over here. So I did a lot of work on the fennec foxes. I basically went through and did a lot more decoration inside their habitat. And I think it came out pretty nice overall. So there is an unfortunate bug where these guys do end up getting stuck over here once they actually do go through the tunnel. Not sure if Frontier sees to fixing that or not, but I always have to manually move them back over here. I'm not going to move that guy because he he wants to be star of the show. Now, obviously, this wouldn't really be realistic at all because, you know, they have the possibility of falling. They have the possibility of doing anything, really. But yeah, I just really do love how this habitat came out. And I also love this part over here. I started like, I really did like this. So I have like the wall of you know, glass walls happening over here, and I start to have it, like, break down and taper out towards the end. 
I just think it looks really good, especially from this end over here. It looks very natural. But yeah, speaking of natural, this place kind of seemed like a natural fit, so this is kind of like the whole food court. And I did this over here as like a little example of like a minaret that's usually the big tower that you see in mosques. And yeah, I just added, um, I think these are uh, Drax storks. So yeah, that's the white stork right there, and we have a couple of them over here. You often see these guys in like, you know, Moroccan ruins and stuff like that, making their homes and their nests on top of these because, you know, they like to make their nests up tall. And I also love this over here. So I hid the, uh, what are these? The King Proteras inside of the ivy, so it made it look like it is flowering. And I have this little feature over here for some water. It doesn't really look too good, but from down here, it has just a bright effect, so I don't know, I just want a little bit of water action in here. And especially since we have this all suspended over water, I felt like it would have been perfect. So if we just continue over here, we can see a little bit of backstage access right there, it's nothing crazy. But I just love how this whole area came out. So we're starting to get into like a little bit more Medina, a little bit more, um... A little bit more of a populated area in terms of like architecture and stuff so we're actually gonna start off with the food court because I built that first and I want to have like a nice little covered area so the arctic canvas really came in clutch over here and I wanted to have like a nice big area for people to eat at kind of like you know a food court which is what I call this so that makes all sense yeah you guys come here for my excellent commentary anyways so I wanted to actually emphasize this view down here. I wanted to make sure that you could actually like see pretty much a good chunk of the fennec fox habitat. And we're actually going to take one of these guys. We'll take you. You'll end up there soon enough. And we'll actually move you right over here. And I just want to show off like how it looks, how you can see these little guys. But yeah, I really do love that. I don't know, you just get like such a nice and unique view into here. And that's what I really love about exhibits like this, where, like, you have an incredibly unique perspective from a place that you wouldn't normally go. So, like, you actually have to go out of your way to get something very interesting. That, like, you know, this view over here, it's really good. You get to see them, like, every so often. Like, you can peek right there and see them. You can peek right there and see them. And you can see them from all those. But from up here, you can see, like, everything. And that's what I really love about, like, exhibit design sometimes. And I just love, like, the, I don't know, it's just the layering and, like, the uh, verticality of all this. I love the fences and, like, it's kind of like a forced perspective, I guess, where it looks a lot further away and, like, I don't know. I just really do love the effective distance over there. So I do have a chief beef. Uh, obviously, why not? We also have a broken pip shot. Can't fix that now because I don't have any mechanics, but that's whatever. And I just love how well um, these pillars came out, especially for holding like this entire thing up. It just seems like such a beautiful area, just like relaxing, especially in like a hot place like this. I know I called it the Kalahari Zoo, but the Kalahari is in South Africa, and I'm going kind of for like North African architecture. But you know, it's it's all pretty good. You know, we can just say that they they have a branch in North Africa. We can do that. So over here, I did a little bit of a different thing. It's completely not usable whatsoever. But yeah, I figured this could be like a nice little education area. The kids can come here while the uh, parents are off to dinner or something like that. And I would have like, you know, let's get a Frank over here actually. So Archer. So we would have someone over here doing like live demonstrations on like how these tiles are made. I've actually experienced this in real life like many, many times. And I've actually gotten to sit with like Moroccan craftsmen who do tile work like this. And it really is such like a beautiful process. And like the whole place is a mess, I'll admit. But it adds to a lot of the charm. So I have a few of these over here and like different colors and styles. And I have like a few like tiles down here. These one by ones are incredibly useful for that, so I absolutely love those. Easily one of my new favorite pieces whatsoever. But yeah, I figured this would be a nice area for the kids to come and learn something, and the craftsmen would hand out tiles to everyone. I feel like that would be a nice little experience to have, just a little, little thing to have in the zoo. So over here, we're starting to get into a little, um, little tortoise habitat. I know, I know, I said I wanted to do the African penguin, but I just wasn't feeling it. I'm sorry, guys. But, like, I have such an extravagant idea for it, but it's just, I don't know how to do it right now. But I really did want to include some other things, so I have the Aldabra tortoise over here. 
And they have these little feeding stations so you could actually pay money for some food. And you know, just throw it to these guys and they seem to love it. I just really do love how well the Eldabbers came out. They're just such beautiful little guys. But yeah, they have like all this nice area to hang around in. I love how like the fencing came out. Um, this little area over here is implied, of course, but this would be like their holding area. And I just love using like the uh, mesh pieces in here. Just to be able to see like kind of into the exhibit, maybe if they're like hiding out in there. At least you'll know that they're in there. Yeah, just having like all this shading too with the acacia tree, it really makes it come out really well in the end. And I don't know, we can change up like times and stuff. Maybe like during this time of the day, they'll like bask in the sun a little bit. I really do love these guys so much. But yeah, that is pretty much all I have to report on today. It's a little bit of a uh, guest-centered video, I guess. Um, certainly a lot more stuff to do for like the kids and stuff, a lot more places to eat. I just really love how this whole strip is coming out. It feels like such a nice and welcoming area. And the sight lines in here are incredible. So if you're like up here and you just look over here, you can just see like how much activities there are to do in the zoo. And I don't know, it's just really starting to shape up to be a real zoo. Cause like, I don't know, at the start over here, it was like, yeah, I have a couple exhibits. I have the meerkats, I have the hyenas. But at this point, we can start to see like, yeah, this is going to be a big, nice zoo. Maybe not so big, but I don't know. I'm having a lot of fun with it. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days.